Consider the function p where p is defined by the given rule. Find the value of a when p inverse of a is equal to 2 where a is a real number. If p inverse of a is equal to 2, then we can say that p of 2 is going to equal a. And so summing in 2 into p of x, this is going to be 2 to the power of 4 minus 2 to the power of 3 minus 2 squared plus 2 plus 1 is going to equal to a. And so this is going to be 16 minus 8 minus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is going to equal a. And so we're going to get 16 minus 8, which is 8, minus 4, which is 4, and then plus 3 is 7. And so therefore, the value of a is going to be 7. Find the value of b when p of b equals 1, where b is larger than 0. p of b is going to be b to the power of 4 minus b cubed minus b squared plus b plus 1, and this is going to equal 1. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we're going to get b to the power of 4 minus b cubed minus b squared plus b is going to equal 0. We can take our b as a common factor, and so this will be b times b cubed minus b squared minus b plus 1, and this is going to equal 0. Inside the brackets, we have a cubic expression, and we can factorize this using the grouping method. And so we're going to get b times, and taking b squared as a common factor from the first two terms, this is going to be b squared times b minus 1. And then we're going to get minus, and then b minus 1. And this is going to equal 0. And so simplifying this, this is going to be b times b squared minus 1 times b minus 1, which is going to equal 0. From here, solving for b, we use the null factor law, and so b is going to equal 0, or b squared minus 1 is going to equal 0, or b minus 1 is going to equal 0. We know that b has to be larger than 0, and so it can't equal to 0, and so b is going to equal plus or minus 1 for this factor, and b is going to equal 1 for this factor. And so therefore, since b is larger than 0, b can only equal 1. Find the rule and the domain of f inverse, the inverse of f, if f is defined by the given rule. To find the rule of f inverse, the first thing we need to do is rewrite f of x in proper fraction form. To do this, we can use the polynomial division method. And so we're going to get x minus 2 divided into x plus 3. And so x goes into x once, and then multiplying this, we're going to get 1 times x is equal to x, and then 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. Subtracting this, this is going to be x minus x is 0, and 3 minus minus 2 is going to be 5. And so f of x in proper fraction form is going to be 1 plus 5 over x minus 2. From here, we let y is equal to 1 plus 5 over x minus 2. We then swap the x and y variables and then solve for y. And so we're going to get x is equal to 1 plus 5 over y minus 2. Solving for y, we're going to get x minus 1 is equal to 5 over y minus 2. And so y minus 2 is going to be 5 over x minus 1. And so y is going to be 5 over x minus 1 plus 2. And so therefore, f inverse of x is going to have the rule 5 over x minus 1 plus 2. The domain of f inverse is going to equal to the range of f of x. To find the range of f of x, it's best to sketch its graph. f of x is a positive hyperbola translated one unit up and two units to the right. And so its graph is going to look something like this. The range of this graph is going to be all real numbers except for 1. And so therefore, the domain of f inverse is going to be for x values, where x is going to be all real numbers except for 1. Thanks for watching. Now if you guys want to improve your understanding on inverse functions, then log into the Maths Methods Club where you can group past exam questions related to just inverse functions. All you have to do is select functions and graphs from the main topics and then inverse functions from the subtopics. If you scroll down, you can also group by question type. And so let's say you just want to learn take free questions, click on take free and then click on filter. 
This is going to instantly group past exam questions related to just inverse functions. And this is the best way you can learn this topic. Go through these questions and see how many you can answer. And if you get stuck, just watch the video solutions. Best of luck, and I'll see you guys in the next video.